the media are absolutely destroying themselves on the shoals of their own political bias. The clearest example of this doesn't even have to do with President Trump today. The clearest example of this has to do with the scandal that is now plaguing the Catholic Church. Now, as I have said, I think it is very important to put in context the fact that the Catholic Church, which has obviously an institutional problem with the sexual abuse of minors, is not unique in this way. There are lots of institutions across the United States and internationally in which abuse of children is looked, uh, is sort of overlooked by people in power, specifically to maintain the supposed credibility of those institutions. The Catholic Church just happens to be the most prominent of them. And I think for good reason, because the Catholic Church, like other religious institutions, is seen and should be seen as a higher moral arbiter. The fact is that the Catholic Church stands at the precipice between secularism and religion, and Jews, Protestants, people of all other faith persuasions should be deeply troubled by what's happening inside the Catholic Church. Well, to recap, the Catholic Church basically was experiencing a serious issue in which a cardinal named McCarrick was accused of the abuse of a bunch of minors, as well as with homosexual activity with a bunch of seminarians as well. He was accused by one of his, by, by an archbishop named Carlo Maria Vigano. He's, uh, the, the accusation is that the higher ups at the church, particularly Pope Francis, basically covered all this up, that he knew about this and that Cardinal McCarrick was put into essentially a, a form of, of private excommunication almost. He was basically ordered to do prayer and penance for the rest of his life by Pope Benedict. And then Francis took him out of that and made him a public figure again. That was the accusation that was made by Vigano. And all of this matters because now the media are coming out and they are defending the Pope. They're defending Pope Francis. Pope Francis refuses to comment on this. He has not confirmed or denied that he knew that this cardinal was engaged in homosexual abuses inside the church. He, and there are two forms of abuse, obviously. There's homosexual abuses because it's against Catholic canon law for priests to engage in sexual activity of any sort. And then it's doubly against canon law for them to engage in homosexual activity. And then it is triply against canon law to engage in all of that plus children. Well, now the, it, it turns out the members of the, of the upper echelon of the church, Pope Francis's greatest defenders, are coming out and defending Pope Francis, not by saying that Pope Francis fights this kind of stuff within the church on a regular basis. Instead, they're fighting back by suggesting that Pope Francis should be given a pass because Pope Francis is to the left on politics. Leading the way is Cardinal Blaise Kupich. Blaise Kupich is, the, uh, is one of the archbishops, I believe, over in Chicago. Uh, and uh, he is you know, deeply tied in with, the, with Pope Francis particularly. His comments on the scandal are absolutely disgusting. The Pope has a bigger agenda. He's got to get on with other things of talking about the environment and uh, protecting uh, migrants and carrying on the work of the church. We're not going to go down a rabbit hole on this. How insane is that statement? Hey, we're not gonna go down a rabbit hole on stopping child molestation inside the church. We have to focus on greater issues like climate change and illegal immigration. Those are the bigger issues. Not the sexual abuse of minors by people in positions of authority supposedly representing God and Jesus. No, no. What it really has to do with is protecting the Catholic church from allegations that would stop their progressive agenda. Now, I've been a critic, a longtime critic of Pope Francis. I think a lot of conservative Catholics have joined me in that criticism, or rather, I have joined them in that criticism. The reality is that Pope Francis is a liberation theologist who believes that the, the auspices of the church ought to be used to push a sort of proto-Marxist economics, uh, as well as a social liberalism when it comes to issues various and sundry. He has not changed church doctrine with regard to abortion, but he's been incredibly soft on LGBT issues, particularly on the social side. He's also been extraordinarily to the left on issues of climate change, economic redistribution, and illegal immigration. That comment by Kupich is so telling, Cardinal Kupich, to say that the Pope has a bigger agenda, he's got to get on with other things like talking about the environment and protecting migrants and carrying on the work of the church. That's an insane statement. It's an insane, how insane is that statement? The Babylon Bee, which is a parody website, they printed a headline two weeks ago in which they said, Pope defends himself from allegations of cover-up of child molestation by pointing to climate change work. It was a parody headline. And then Kupich actually said the parody headline. And prosecutors are saying now, it's not just this one Cardinal Vigano who's accusing the church of knowing about all this. According to a, a state attorney general in Pennsylvania, the Vatican knew about all of this as well. This is according to Reuters. The Vatican knew of a cover-up of child sex abuse by Roman Catholic priests in Pennsylvania through secret archives that bishops in the state shared with church leaders in Rome, according to State Attorney General Josh Shapiro. 
No relation. Though Catholic bishops in Pennsylvania systematically denied the sexual abuse of thousands of children over a 70-year period, they secretly documented the cases and often sent information on them to the Vatican, Shapiro told two national news shows. Shapiro first made the allegations against the Vatican during an August 14th news conference to unveil a report on a two-year investigation into how Catholic clergymen in the state allegedly groomed and sexually abused children. It was largely based on documents from the archives kept by the state's six dioceses, he said. He said, quote, there are specific examples where when the abuse occurred, the priests would go, the bishops would go and lie to parishioners, lie to law enforcement, lie to the public, but then document all the abuse in secret archives that would share oftentimes with the Vatican. Shapiro did not comment on whether Pope Francis or his predecessors knew of the information. Again, the allegation is by Cardinal Vagano that Pope Francis knew all about them. Vagano over the weekend published this 11-page public statement talking about Pope Francis and Pope Francis's willingness to overlook all of this and calling on Francis to resign on the grounds the Pope knew for years about the sexual misconduct of Cardinal McCarrick. Vagano said he told the Pope himself five years ago, a little more than three months after Francis' election, and Francis reacted badly to that and put pressure on him in the opposite direction, was actually angry at him for having revealed any of this stuff. George Weigel is a senior fellow in Catholic Studies at the Ethics and Public Policy Center in Washington, D.C. He said, Vagano is a loyal churchman. If he is making these allegations now and calling for Francis' resignation, it is for the gravest reasons. Now, how are the media treating all of this? You would imagine the media might be a little upset. Like normally, the media are pretty upset when it comes to Catholic priests abusing children. Right? There was a movie that just won an Oscar based on this. Right? Spotlight was based on the Boston Globe uncovering hundreds of abuse cases in in Massachusetts archdiocese. So the media have been all over sexual scandals within the Catholic Church for good reasons and bad. Good reasons because all of that stuff should be uncovered and all of it should be brought to light and that stuff should be, I mean, it's evil and the people involved should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. The bad is that it's pretty obvious there is a disparate motivation in the media for going after the Catholic Church as opposed to, say, other religious institutions that are more minority or non-religious institutions in which sexual abuse has become a serious problem, like the American public schools. With all of that said, the media were were certainly attentive to this problem inside the Catholic Church for years and years and years and years, and as I say, with good reason. But in this particular case, they're not reacting. They are not reacting with the sort of outrage you would normally see directed at the Catholic Church. Instead, their outreach is directed at the people who are making the accusations. They're very upset with Cardinal Vagano. They're very upset with Catholics who are upset with Pope Francis. Why? Because Pope Francis must be protected at all costs because Pope Francis is a political leftist. And this is a a headline from Reuters. Hey, here it is by Philip Pulella. Defenders rally around the Pope, fear conservatives escalating war. Conservatives escalating war? Like, really? That's the great fear here? Not the Catholic Church covering up cases of sexual abuse of minors? Not the violation of Catholic canon law over and over and over by top members of the church with the knowledge of the top Vatican hierarchy. That's not the real issue here. The only real issue here is that Pope Francis has fallen under assault. This is why folks don't trust the media and they shouldn't trust the media because when it comes to protecting their favorite figures, the media will rush to their defense at the first available opportunity, whether it is Barack Obama or Pope Francis. They like Pope Francis because they think that he is a liberal when it comes to matters of homosexuality and when it comes to matters of climate change and when it comes to matters of illegal immigration. And so they are rallying around Pope Francis, even though it now appears there are significant credible allegations that Pope Francis knew of molestation of priests, right? that the priests were, were engaged in homosexual activities. Part of this is that the media are deeply uncomfortable with any attempt to correlate the, the problem of a homosexual subculture inside the Catholic Church and the problems of targeting abuse of minors. So the fact is that Cardinal McCarrick, the accusations made by Vagano, don't actually even extend to the abuse of minors. They just extend to Vagano basically having a bunch of homosexual affairs with seminarians uh, and pressuring those seminarians into sex. The media doesn't think that's a bad thing. And so they're angry that conservatives are talking about that in the first place. They also are, are refusing to acknowledge that there is, in fact, a correlation between McCarrick's activities in certain areas and McCarrick's activities in other areas. And there are certain uncomfortable truths that no one is allowed to speak about the culture of the church and the targeting, particularly of young males in in the church. The reality is that a disproportionate number of the victims of sexual abuse who are minors in the church have been male, which is is something that the media don't want to talk about specifically because they think that will then be used as a way to club homosexuals and, and, and gay and lesbian folks and tar them as innate child molesters. 
I don't think that has to be done. I think that you can point out that there is a disparity in the number of boys who have been abused in the church and girls who have been abused in the church without accusing all homosexuals, for example, of wanting to prey on children, which is a bunch of nonsense. But the attempt to defend Pope Francis is obviously very telling. That wasn't even the worst headline of the day.